Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another viewer requested fundamental analysis video. We are almost done with this wheel guys. I'm going to try to finish this this weekend. I am so sorry for not uploading anything yesterday on Friday. I yeah, I was just really really tired. But today guys, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you at least two videos for today so that way we can knock out two of these companies that are on the wheel. So, let's spin it and see what company we should analyze based from a fundamental perspective. And it looks like we got the company DBI. Now, DBI, guys, was brought up by none other than Tony. Actually, the <laughs> two of these are from him as well, KFY and MOV. But DBI was brought up by Tony. So let's take a look at this company, guys. Let's see if whether or not the current share price is a buy, if the fundamentals are any good, etc., etc., etc. And then, yeah, I guess we'll see what kind of decision I take when it comes to this kind of company. All right, everybody. So this is the company designer brands. Now I've personally never heard of this company, or maybe I have, but I don't know, I'm not really too much of a of a shoe guy myself, or even like an apparel's guy myself. I, you know, I'm a guy. I have five shirts, two pairs of pants, and then that's about it. So yeah, uh, let's take a look at what this company does, guys, because. I don't necessarily know their brands in general. So coming over here into the company profile, we can see designer brands together with the subsidiaries design manufacturers and retails footwear and accessories for women, men, and kids, primarily in the United States and Canada. The company operates through the three segments, US retail, Canada retail, and brand portfolio. It provides dress casual, oh sorry, it provides dress, casual, and athletic footwear and accessories and handbags. The company offers its products under the Vince Camuto, Jessica Simpson, Lucky, J-Lo, another brand. I've never heard of any of these brands. Maybe my, my wife will know them, but I personally don't. It also operates Vince Cum, uh, VinceCamuto.com and TopAthletic.com, all right? E-commerce sites as well as DSW.com, DSW Canada, the the shoe company California websites and portfolio banners including DSW designer shoe wear, the shoe company and DSW. The company was founded in 1991 is based in Columbus, Ohio. So there are, well, you know, they've been since 1991 and look at this guys, 14,000 employees. That's actually not too shabby. So let's see what the company's earnings was. They're taking a look at the earnings summary. We could see that this was announced on the 8th of June. So that was just two days ago. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, we are going to cover their earnings, by the way. EPS normalized actual, 21 cents. That was a miss by 2 cents. EPS gap actual, 17 cents. Missed by 5 cents. Revenue actual, $742.08 million. Missed by almost $9 million. So let's take a look at the earnings. And like always, this will be linked in the description below for everybody to read. We got over here. Well, actually, we're going to start off with none other than the CEO's comments. We got, quote, I am pleased with the quarter we delivered on top of outsized market leading growth in the first quarter of the last year, albeit slightly below our initial expectations. We have made significant operational progress on our goal of doubling sales of our own brands by 2026 over 2021 with our recent acquisition of Keds Le Tigre, okay, and Topo Athletics, helping to further expand and diversify our brand portfolio. We continue to lean further than ever before into our own brands, harnessing the key and exciting moments to showcase our brands with engaging events and customer experiences. As the consumer remains cautious, we are approaching the remainder of the year and trajectory of the recovery of in our business with heightened consideration. We are confident in our ability to continue to optimize those factors over which we have control, providing compelling products from our own brands and an ideal national brand assortment to our customers seeking wide range of styles. All right. So I don't, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, they are making a lot of acquisitions, so that's going to put a damper probably under cash flow. We'll take a look at that in just one second. Let's come to the first quarter operating results. Net sales decreased 10.7% to $742.1 million. Comparable sales decreased by 10.4, that's a massive number. Gross profit decreased to $237.7 million versus the $275.7 million last year. 
and gross margin was 32% compared to 33.2% in the same period last year. Reported net income attributable to designer brands was 11.4 million or diluted earnings per share of 17 cents, including net charges of 4 cents per diluted share from adjusted items. Adjusted net income was $14.3 million and adjusted diluted EPS of 21 cents. We got over here the liquidity, cash and cash and colons total $50.6 million at the end of the first quarter of 2023, compared to $55 million at the end of the same period last year, with $200.3 million available for borrowings under our senior secured assets based revolving credit facility. The company ended the first quarter with inventories of $637.4 million compared to the $672.5 million at the end of the same period last year. Store openings and closings. Okay, this is actually interesting. During the first quarter, we closed two stores in the United States and opened one new store in Canada, resulting in a total of 499 US stores and 139 Canadian stores as of April 29th, 2023. And looking at the outlook, I'm pretty sure this is what caused the company to move up or down. I have not taken a look at the share price movement yet, but we can see here that when it comes into the outlook, designer brands net sales growth, excluding Keds, down mid single digits was the previous guidance and down mid single digits. So that one hasn't changed. Incremental net sales from Keds acquisition, 75 million to 85 million. So that's the same. And then designer brands excluded. So this is now the diluted EPS. So that was the net sales. Now this is the diluted EPS. When it comes to the designer brands excluding Keds, it was a dollar sixty-five to a dollar seventy-five. Now it's a dollar twenty to a dollar fifty. That is a massive, massive reduction in that. And the contributions from Keds is zero and zero because I'm fairly certain that they do not have any. Um, they, they, they just don't know exactly how that would essentially affect it. Nonetheless, though, this is a little bit of the earning. So let's jump now into the discounted free cash flow. We got the ticker for DBI market cap of $562.12 million, a P of 4.08 with a current share price of $8.60. Taking a look at this on the one year, though, this is down 45.15% year to date, it's probably, wow, it's down also 6.83%. Now, I am very curious, in the past five days after the earnings came out, guys, you can see that this thing rose pretty much on earnings day, right? Uh, yeah, on earnings day, this thing gapped massively from $7.21 to $8.23. That's crazy. And well, we can see that as of Friday that they lost around 0.6 of a percent. Overall, though, you can definitely see that we aren't at 52-week uh, lows, but we're very, very close to it. It was $6.14, and the high was $19.38. Coming back into the calculator, we can see that they do pay out the dividend of $0.25, cents, which is a yield of almost 3%, a payout ratio of 12.74, and a 5-year CAGR, 21 Sorry, negative 21.71%, zero consecutive years. So, you know what we got to do, right? We got to take a look at this dividend history because I have no idea. All right. And it actually turns out that this is very explainable. Guys, they cut their, well, first of all, they cut their dividend on March 26, 2020. So, right when the whole country shut down here in the United States. And then after that, they were probably like, you know what? No, no, we just got to suspend it for a little bit. And then they suspended it following that date up until reinstating it just as of April 20th, 2022, and not even close to what it was. So yeah, actually, by the looks of it, they did bring it back up to 25 cents as of, oh no, sorry, 25 cents per year. This is 25, this is 5 cents per quarter. So yeah, yeah, they have just reinstated that back by a massive decrease from 25 cents per quarter down to five cents per quarter so yeah that explains that massive thing but then again it was explainable right it's covid's one-time thing kind of understandable ex dividend date passed as of march 30th so next one will probably be on june 30th payout date was on april 14th and they pay their dividends quarterly back into the calculator based off of this 25 cents in annual dividends and the current shares of standing they pay out 16.75 million dollars in dividends every single year and after this is paid they're left with almost 50 million dollars in their five-year average free cash flow and as of their last year's free cash flow they still have left 129.65 million dollars there's a massive massive increase it's telling me that the free cash was actually increasing at least year over year right obviously we don't know the graph yet but that is essentially what that's telling me these payout ratios are really tiny 11.44 and 25 and a half for the last year's free cash flow and the five-year average respectively meaning that they can 100 continue to pay out this dividend if they so wish to do so or even increase it as well 
All right, so let's jump now into the fundamentals and straight off the bat guys I am already seeing a massive massive outlier, but Personally, I'm not going to take it into account and I'll get to that in just one second But we got the net income guys five years ago of negative 20.5 million dollars to one year ago of 162.7 million dollars. That is an increase of 894% now you can see that well five years ago It was the only time when they went negative and they're probably looking at this and You're like, yeah, but what about three years ago guys? I understand that three years ago They went negative 488.7 million dollars in the red But I'm not going to actually take that into account because that was COVID and well We know what happened during COVID so I'm not going to hurt them for that I, I really am not so the way that I look at this is that is a pretty big spike from five to four years ago, but five years ago is so long ago. And you can see that even from four to two years ago, it's not that much of an increase. It's actually very steadily increasing. So overall, I'm actually going to give this thing, I would say like a 75, well, I'm going to go with actually an 80%. So, yeah, looking now at the free cash flow, this actually looks even better than that of the net income. We got five years ago of $109.9 million to one year ago of $146.4 million. Increase of 33% with an average of $65.74 million. Once again, the massive outlier during COVID, but I'm not gonna actually hurt it at all because you can see here that from five to four, nice steady increase. And then from four to two, that's another pretty good steady increase. No massive outliers here, right? And then from two to one, once again, an increase with no massive outliers. I'm gonna give this guys a total grade of 100%. Looking now into the revenue. Once again, it looks really, really good. Five years ago of $3.2 billion, two one year ago of $3.3 billion, increase of 4.33%. Obviously, COVID hit, you can see from four to three, that was a pretty big drop. But after that, it went up but you can see that it's not as high as it was four years ago, though it is slowly increasing even as of one year ago. So I'm actually going to give this, I would say, an 85% or so. Looking now into the total assets minus the total liabilities. COVID really did a number on this thing, but even prior to COVID, you can see that this thing was heading down. COVID definitely hit it hard, going from $721 million down to $243 million. But then after that, you can see that it has gone up rather consistently. And it's, well, yeah, I think it was just a cause of COVID. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that I think that this might continue to go up, but I don't necessarily know what happened five to four years ago, right? Average total assets, it is 2.12 billion. Average liabilities, it is 1.67 billion. Doing this difference, we get $451.12 million, guys. I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this, I would say like a 55% or so. When it comes into the cash flow minus the liabilities, not surprising that the lowest point was three years ago at negative $2 billion. But then as of lately, guys, you can see, you know, three to two, nice jump. And then from two to one, not a big jump, but it's still, you know, it's still, it's still an increase in the right direction, right? So overall, it's not looking too bad. You can see that from five to four, that was a massive, massive decrease, but that was so long ago. In fact, guys, as of one year ago, well, it's there at 1.43 billion dollars which well it's a little bit lower than what they what the average is at 1.4 but they get that average is also including COVID as well. So overall, I'm actually going to give this thing, I would say like another 60%. Looking now into the shares outstanding. Well, we can see here that it's decreasing, but it's not consistently decreasing. Five years ago of 78.4 million to one year ago of 67 million, decrease of 14 and a half percent on the five year. However, from the previous year to the current year, this is looking at one year ago at 63.7 million to today of 67 million, increase of 5.2%. You can see that, well, when COVID hit, they increased it a little bit from 71.8 to 72.4. Then after COVID, one year after COVID, they went from 72.4 to 73.4. Then they bought back massively as of last year. But then as of one year ago today, they are increasing it a little bit here and there. Overall, I'm going to give this thing a 70%. It's uh, it's interesting to say the least because, well, it is heading down, but they have had instances of diluting shares in the past five years. And lastly, cash flow clearance, they currently hold $50.6 million with an average of $71.3 million. Now, the overall grade is actually not as bad as you guys would think. Net income of 80%, free cash flow 100%, revenue 85%, assets minus liabilities 55%, cash flow minus liabilities 60%, shares outstanding of 70%. 
overall grade of 80. Yeah, my personal opinion is actually not that bad, guys. Obviously, they had issues when it came to COVID, but then again, it's just COVID. It wasn't in their control, so that's why I'm not hitting it with that. Main problem I see, though, is those liabilities, right? Those liabilities are definitely hitting it a lot. Aside from that, though, yeah, it's actually a pretty decent company. This is what, a B minus. So, yeah, it's actually not too shabby in my personal opinion. However, let's actually take a look at what the Discount and Free Castle says. Current share price is $8.60. Now, not adjusting for debt and not inputting anything, we can see that the calculator is saying that the price should be worth $12.08. Adjusting for debt, this goes into the negatives because, well, they have a lot more net debt than they do cash and equivalents. So, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. But nonetheless, though, let's input some of these numbers. If we come over here, guys, to Seeking Alpha Scroll tab, we can see that the forward revenue is essentially zero right it's essentially zero um i i'm not gonna be i don't think that they're gonna do zero i mean when you take a look at the overall revenue yeah it has been it has been kind of down overall but you can see that after covid they did bring it up a significant amount so that's why i'm, I'm just not gonna dig it that hard i know seeking alpha says zero guys i'm gonna go revenue for like two three and four percent for the low median and high assumption now for the projected share buyback they have been buying back at around 15 percent in the past five years with a couple hiccups here and there but let's just say roughly the same well i wouldn't say roughly the same but let's just say five percent share buyback six percent share buyback and seven percent share buyback in the next five years doing this we get the target share prices of thirteen dollars and sixty four to almost fifteen dollars so if you remember the overall 52 week range the highest was nineteen dollars and 38 cents so yeah i mean the way that i see this is the guys they have a ton of debt in regards to their cash and equivalents but not just seeing for debt this is looking fairly decent if you believe these assumptions now if you wanted to put in those negative revenues, if you wanted to put in like negative one, let's say zero, and let's say positive one, well, you kind of still get the same thing though, right? You kind of still do get the same thing. Um, this is just, it's, it's a very interesting company because the way the grades aren't that bad, right? They're, they're, they're not that bad. Yet the target share price is looking good. My main issue is the fact that they have a lot more debt than cash equivalent. So please do your own due diligence when it comes to this. This was not due diligence, guys. All these calculators are available for free, as well as the earnings report will be linked in the description below for everybody to read. Please do that for yourselves and see what numbers you get. Because I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, this is one that if I was interested in buying this company, I would be like, all right, let's take a look at their 10Ks now. Let's take a look at their uh, previous earnings, right? Let's take a look at their what they're doing with acquisitions and that kind of stuff. Because with 80% and the fact that the current share price is $8.60, it's looking great. But the fact that the target share prices after they are in the negatives, it's a little bit concerning to me. But again, that's just what I would do. Obviously, as I stated, you guys can have all of these calculators for free. The earning support will be linked in the description below. Please do your own due diligence. This is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. If you guys like the kind of content we do here, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help here with the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. The link is in the description below as well. So that is the best way that you guys can help us if you like this kind of content. We appreciate all the tips you guys give us. We really do. But we just really want to grow the channel. We are up to almost 2,600 subscribers. If we could reach that by the end of the month, that would be absolutely insane. So hit that like button, hit subscribe, comment, and of course, share with everybody if you like this kind of content. Looking at this dividend, it's not necessarily a bad company when it comes to a dividend. It's, you know, the reason why they cut it was because of COVID. So it's, uh, yeah, I would argue that because of that, it's not too bad. And again, guys, your payout ratio is 11.44 and 25 and a half. So it's not looking too bad either. Putting in $5,725, this nets you $166.43 does have potential especially if they want to increase that dividend back to 25 cents per share which would make it a dollar in fact if we were to do that let's say the, the price remains the same and this annual dividend becomes a dollar well guys that would be wow yeah that would be 665 obviously i think the price would change after that point and you know these uh obviously these these power ratios would be significantly different but nonetheless it's it's just it is what it is right it is what it is but that's uh that's just what the dividend would be so the, the dividend in my personal opinion is looking okay be very very weary though because they did cut it because of covid 
but then again, their pair Rachels are looking really, really good. When it comes to the options change, though, there really isn't anything here. We're looking at the June 16th one, guys, which is next week. And you got no bids for the puts and no bids for the ask. Looking at the July 21st one, we got one bid for the put at $7.50 and just two bids for the ask at $9 strike and $10 strike. October 20th. Yeah, you heard me right. There are no other options aside from June july october and january 19th 2024 the october one's looking a lot better i yeah it's it's looking a lot better but then again i don't know i don't necessarily know what you would do with this if you have 100 shares and you did buy this thing at six dollars well you could sell this thing for ten dollars strike if it does reach it then you would get four dollars per share also getting a premium of 65 cents and the last option it is for next year in January. This is where most of this is, guys. I mean, yeah. But nonetheless, though, this is the options change when it comes to DBI. All in all, though, thank you so much for the recommendation, Tony. And I gotta say, I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting that grade from this company. I, I really, really wasn't. Really interesting company, though. Maybe one that is might be interesting for people if if they want to do a little bit more research on this. This might be one that may go up a lot honestly it really might so yeah that pretty much does it for this video you guys can follow us on the new tech sites link is in the description below so with that said peace out and we'll see you all next time